All right, picking up from where we left off, um, this is part two of the analysis of um, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. We talked about uh, in the last one that we have Ichabod, who is kind of our anti-hero, I guess, in the story. Um, he is gangly and awkward. He's materialistic. He thinks only about um, getting and... Um, especially his with his appetite and uh, his materialism and his greed um, and he has put into his head that he is going to um, win the hand of the richest girl in town Katrina Van Tassel not because um, he is drawn to her beauty but because he is drawn to her um, um, so then you have on the alternate hand you have other suitors who are um, interested in Katrina as well and so we kind of get the sense that Katrina is kind of like an object she kind of represents um, materialism I guess um, in the town um, and she's treated almost like an object uh, the way that she's described the way that she is um, treated um, but then on the other hand, you have this Brom Bones, or Abraham uh, Van Brunt, who is everything that Ichabod is not. Um, he is all of this, um, he's athletic, he is a good fighter, he's a good horseman, he's attractive. He's clearly the better choice for Katrina just in qualities alone. However, Baltus Van Tassel, he doesn't really want to give his daughter up to just anybody. And Katrina is really proud and she, you know, she wants to make a good match and she wants it to be with somebody that um, appreciates her and, and, and doesn't treat her as just something to be won. So, um, clearly, it's impossible to for Ichabod to win against Brom Bones in any kind of competition uh, for her heart. Uh, physical competition, you know, the only thing that he really has going for him are his mental fortitude, his, um, his intelligence. Uh, and um, he kind of resolves to win her over in other ways. Uh, that he knows he cannot compete with Brom in. So Brom is a kind of a um, Brom is a kind of trickster. He likes to play pranks and he's very mischievous in nature. And so when he learns that Ichabod is um, kind of competing for Katrina's affections, he kind of turns his attention on to Ichabod. And it's very mischievous, mischievous. He mocks him every chance he gets. He plays tricks on him as well, including um, including blocking up the schoolhouse chimney so that the smoke would smoke out um, would smoke out the schoolhouse uh, room. And and uh, he went and he broke into the schoolhouse and kind of tore up the place and so Ichabod with his wild imagination thought that it was the work of witchcraft um and he um he was just not very um very nice to Ichabod um and so this goes on for quite some time and um Ichabod is kind of um, discouraged, obviously, because every chance he gets uh, to uh, meet with Katrina, kind of Brom kind of throws in uh, in his hand so that you know he can't he can't make any progress. So one night, Ichabod gets an invitation to the Van Tassels for a um for a party it was it was called a a quilting frolic um or a, just a merry making just a little little rowdy get together and so Ichabod is really excited he he sends his kids home early from school he goes and spends an extra half hour at his toilet brushing and furbishing up his best 
and his only suit of rusty black and um he tries he makes some great pains to um to to look nice in the only suit that he has and so his horse he mounts his horse that he borrows from uh, a neighbor hans van ripper uh and the horse's uh name was gunpowder um which is kind of an ironic name but Anyway, so he gets on this broken down plow horse, this raggedy old horse. His, he'd outlived almost everything but his viciousness. Um, and so he takes the horse to the house, the Van Tassel's mansion. And so he gets to the house. And the party is happening. And, of course, because of Ichabobby and the way that he is, he's noticing all of the things on his ride to the house. He's noticing all of the things in nature, all the the birds and uh, the apple trees and the um, the or- orchards and all these things and all this abundance that kind of feeds into his um, his quest for materialism. And he gets to the party, and he sees on the table all these pies and all of uh, all these beautiful um, things in the in the spread that they have there at the party. And so he, you know, his his um, his thoughts are, you know, still very materialistic. In we know what he can get out of this um, situation. So on our other hand, Brom Bones. Uh, on his horse, who's Daredevil, who is like himself, full of mischief, uh, and no one can but him could manage. You know, he shows up at the party as well, and which is obviously um, disconcerting to Ichabod because you know he was hoping he was going to be the only one that got a um, an invitation to the story. So Ichabod secures a dance with. Katrina. And this is going to make Brom really irate. Uh, Ichabod was a good dancer. He was a good singer. The talented folks like to talk about the fact that he was always singing to himself. And so he's also a good dancer. And so they have this dance, Ichabod and Katrina, which doesn't do anything to help um, <laughs> to help Ichabod's imagination, thinking that things are going really well. And so he leaves the party in kind of a a good good place thinking that he had he had kind of a one-upped brom bones uh with this dance so on his way home he's riding he's in lost in his thoughts and he is uh kind of it's dark it's creepy outside um and he misses the turn to Sleepy Hollow as he's riding on old gunpowder. Um, and he has this sensation that he's being uh, mo- uh, watched. Um, and so he happens to notice um, that he is actually being um, pursued by the Headless Horseman, um, the famed story of the Headless Horseman. So he's missed this turn. He decides that his only hope is to reach the church where the horseman is said to disappear uh but he never he never makes it and the story kind of ends abruptly uh there the next day uh there he doesn't show up for school they're all looking for him and all they're able to find is his hat and a smashed pumpkin which is the head of the headless horseman um and which seems to intimate that He has taken uh, Ichabod and taken his head for his own. Okay, so time passes. uh, Brom Bones marries Katrina Van Tassel um, because he was obviously the best match from the beginning. Um, And um, the story, that part of the story ends. Now, years later, it's heard that um that Ichabod is still alive he is in another town he is in uh he's a judge now he is he's made it up in the world and um and we kind of with context clues kind of come to the uh come to the 
realization that this was probably a prank that was played on him by Brom Bones to kind of run him out of town, um, where Brom is is pretending to be the headless horseman, and and Ichabod is so embarrassed that um, he had been um, kind of outwitted by um, Brom Bones and by his inability to secure the hand of Katrina Montassel that he has left um, and um, decided to make a new life in a different town. So on one hand, this is a very um, lighthearted comic tale. Um, I said that he was kind of the first father of American fiction. Um, but on the other hand, it seems to kind of mock the superstitions and beliefs of this group of, of, of people um, and to kind of remark on punishment for greed and materialism. Ichabod was trapped in his cycle of greed and materialism and he disappears um, mysteriously. So Ichabod's imagination really leads to his downfall in two ways. First, he gets completely carried away in his pursuit of Katrina. He thinks that his chances with her are way better than they really are. He doesn't really have a lot to offer in terms of something that she would be attracted to. Um, and he fantasizes, he builds this future with her up so much in his mind before he even tries to develop a relationship with her that it becomes some kind of unreachable ideal that she could probably never reach. He is not able to make any changes to be the kind of person that she is obviously attracted to. Second, his, his um, belief in ghost stories and, and uh, supernatural tales um, his strong imagination that he has when it comes to that make him really uh, success susceptible to Brom Bones um, and obviously this prank. So he is defeated by that as well.